Hi everyone, Sail from QuickNode here and today in this video, we will talk about Chainlinks CCIP or Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol and we will see how it's solving the interoperability problem of blockchains. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's just a click for you, but it keeps us motivated to keep creating these educational videos. And now let's jump into it. Because of design and security, blockchains are isolated in nature. And now that the number of chains is more than ever, blockchain interoperability is very much needed. So that's what CCIP provides. With CCIP, someone can send tokens from one chain to another, send a message from a chain to another chain, and also send messages with tokens from one chain to another. Using CCIP, someone can create an application, which is a cross-chain application. Then they can also design it in such a way so that the gas fee is offloaded on a chain where the gas is cheaper and processing can be offloaded on a chain where it's much faster and efficient. There are innumerable number of use cases where CCIP can be used. So CCIP is a network of smart contracts and some off-chain components for execution and risk management. So let's say that a user or a decentralized application deployed on Ethereum blockchain wants to interact with a smart contract or a decentralized application on the Polygon blockchain. So what would happen is the smart contract of the DAP on Ethereum blockchain will send a message to the router of CCIP on the Ethereum blockchain. So a user of CCIP just has to know this part, how they can interact with a CCIP router. They do not need to go into the depths of how CCIP works, but we will understand how everything works under the hood. Now let's understand how CCIP works. But before that, let's visualize the components of CCIP. In CCIP, there is a lane. A lane is a unidirectional pathway between two chains. So in this example, we will see uh, Ethereum to Polygon lane and Ethereum will be the sender chain and Polygon will be the receiver chain. Both the chains will have the CCIP router smart contracts. The sender chain will have on-ramp contract. Receiver chain will have the off-ramp smart contract. Then, then there are some off-chain components as well. The committing DON or committing decentralized oracle network, executing DON or executing decentralized oracle network, risk management network, and then there are token pools on both the chains, sender and receiving chains. So now that we have all the components visualized, let's understand how CCIP actually works. So let's assume that there's a decentralized application or a DAP deployed on Ethereum, wants to interact or send tokens or send message to a DAP deployed on Polygon. So what the DAP on Ethereum, it will have to do is, it will have to send a message or a query to a router deployed on the Ethereum, the sender chain. So once the router receives the query, the router will send the query to the receiving chain specific on-ramp smart contract. Each lane has their own on-ramps. Ethereum Polygon will have their own specific smart contract. Ethereum Avalanche will have their own specific one. Ethereum Optimism will have their own specific one, etc. And if the query contains tokens as well, the application or the user or the smart contract on the sender side would have to approve the tokens with the router contract on the sender side. So once the on-ramp smart contract has the message or query, it will do some validations. It will check the message for the receiving chain's parameters and guidelines. It will verify the message limit, gas limits. It will manage the billings for CCIP. To use CCIP, a user needs to pay a fee token and a fee token can be any token. It can be link. It can be native tokens. It can be ERC-20 tokens as well. So if the message also contains token transfers, the on-ramp contract will send the tokens to the token pool, which is stored on the sending chain. And then the token pool will lock the tokens. And then the on-ramp smart contract also emits a event which the committing DON or decentralized Oracle network listens for. So once the event is emitted and committing decentralized Oracle network receives the message, it will generate a Merkle tree and send it to a commit store, which is stored on the receiving chain. While this is being done, the risk management network is also working parallelly. Risk management network has two components, 
One is off-chain component, which is the network of risk management nodes. And the other is on-chain component, which is a risk management smart contract stored on the receiving chain. So the nodes of the risk management network, the off-chain nodes, they generate the Merkle root and then matches it with the Merkle root of the Merkle tree created by the committing decentralized oracle network or DON. And if it matches, it blesses or validates the Merkle root and sends it to the risk management smart contract on the receiving chain. In parallel to this, the executing DON or decentralized oracle network also keeps listening for the event which on RAM smart contract emits. And it also listens for the validation of risk management network for the Merkle root. Once it's validated, the executing DON will send a Merkle proof to the off-ramp smart contract on the receiving chain and the off-ramp smart contract will validate it with the Merkle proof or Merkle root stored in the commit store as well as the risk management smart contract. And once that matches, the off-ramp smart contract will execute the CCIP transaction. If it had token transfer transaction, it will call the token pool to unlock the tokens or if it's a native token on the receiving chain, it will call to mint the token and then the request would go to the router smart contract stored on the receiving chain. From the router smart contract, it will go to the destination which can be a smart contract or a externally owned address. So this is how CCIP or cross-chain interoperability protocol works. It opens a wide range of use cases for cross-chain applications, messaging, and smart contract invocations or functional executions. So in the next video, we will actually use this protocol, the CCIP, and mint an NFT from one chain to another. So if you learned anything from this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the QuickNode YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.